Good morning, y'all. So good to stand before you and share with you this morning. Want to thank Bishop Moody, of course, and Dr. Ty for allowing me to share this incredible word with you this morning. God is so good. And as we are in the Be Free series, today we are going to talk about how to be free with our words, the power of words. Speak life. Amen. Amen. So welcome to you all online. We are so glad that you joined us this morning. We are grateful that you took out the time to say hallelujah, thank you Jesus, to be here with us at the Worship Center Christian Church. Family, I'm not going to waste any time. I want to go right in because we got a lot of ground to cover. The power of words, the power of our tongue started in the beginning. In the beginning. And when I say in the beginning, y'all, I mean the beginning, like Genesis, the beginning. You see, when God created man, he created man in the likeness of his image. Now, what does that mean? It literally means that God created man like no other creature on the earth. God created man in the likeness of him. You know, evolution would say, well, man kind of looks like a monkey or an ape. You know, men evolved in this way. No. God got together with Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ in the, in the Trinity in the beginning and said, you know what? We agree. Man shall be created in the likeness of my image. So what does that mean for me and you? He gave us the power of word from the beginning. Just like God spoke the earth and creation into existence, we speak and we create for things to exist. Let's look at it in the word. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. And it reads, Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave the names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and the wild animals. Family, what does this mean? Adam called. Adam gave. This is proof in scripture that in the beginning, God gave man dominion. Dominion means to rule, to have power over, to declare, to proclaim, call. Gave. If we look at verses 19 and 20, that word call and gave, they're the same words in Hebrew. It means to declare, to proclaim, to name. So as God created the earth with words, he created Adam, built Adam up as man and said, you know what? Whatever you bring, whatever you call these animals, I'm going to bring them to you that they shall be. Because, Adam, you have the power of words. Whatever you name it, that's what it shall be. When Jesus got together with the Lord and Holy Spirit, he gave us power. Family, I don't want us to miss this because this is going to carry us through the rest of the morning. When we speak, we create. When we speak, we create. When we speak, we create. Now, if you look at Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, it says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Now, we know that when we speak, we create. So this verse says, When we create, we can either create life or we can create death. Now, depending on what we create, that's what's going to fill us up, okay? 
So if we speak life, we're going to be full of life, good things, treasures of our heart. If we speak death, then we're going to be down. We're not going to feel the life that God has already prospered for us to enjoy here on earth. What does this mean in a practical sense? I think the best illustration of this is how we speak over our children. Whether you're a grandparent, whether you're a parent, an aunt or an uncle, our words have so much impact on the trajectory of their life. How might this look practically? Girl, how Pookie doing? Oh my God, Pookie is so bad. B-A-D. Pookie get on my last nerves. I don't know when he has accomplished anything. He's so lazy. I can't stand Pookie. I'm just trying to work through and get him out of my house. Pookie get on my nerves. He's just bad. Bad? That's what you said. The scary part about it is because the Lord gave us power in the book of Genesis to speak things into creation, that bad may follow Pookie for the rest of his life. Because that's what he heard. That's what was created. That's what he heard when you were on the phone. That's what he heard when you were talking to his teacher. That's what Pookie heard. Bad. B A D. How might this look then if we flip it? Girl, how Pookie doing? Pookie doing so good. I'm so excited about all the things that he's doing and accomplishing. He speaks well. He's so intelligent. I believe he's going to be strong and courageous when he grows up. He's going to be a game changer. Now, the difference is you may feel like Pookie really is bad. But we got to speak things into existence. We got to speak it before we see it. And when we speak it before we see it, things will change and shift. Can I, can I tell you this morning, I had some behavioral issues when I was a child. But my mother called me sweetie. My grandmother, she said, you're a sweet girl. You can be sweet. Y'all, I stand here before you today by the grace of God that I can possibly be one of the nicest people you know because of what was spoken over my life. I give you this example because I want you to grasp and hold on to when when we speak, we create. When we speak, we create. And when we can create a shift and a change, when we speak, God gave us dominion in the beginning. Something else happened in the beginning. Let's look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Now, God gave us the power of words. And then as we begin to live on earth, some other things happen. It says in 6 verse 5, the Lord saw how great man's wickedness was on the earth. And that every inclination of thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. So God said, man, this is disgusting. I I can't deal with this. I'm going to wipe the earth clean with the flood. Just going to wash it all out. I'm just trying to start over in a sense. So he spared Noah and Noah's family. When Noah came out of the ark, the flood came, Noah came out of the ark, the first thing Noah did was build an altar. The Lord, God, took a deep breath. Let's see how the Lord responded in Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. It says, the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma And said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of humans. Even though every 
inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. So now what's the connection between our heart and our words? Because clearly there's some significance. God wiped out the earth clean with the flood because of the evil in our hearts. As Adam and Eve, when they ate from the forbidden tree, they brought sin into the world and all of their offspring just became more evil and more evil. And God wiped it away. But then when Noah had the altar and God smelt the aroma of the altar, he said, you know what? Y'all just going to be evil. Your heart, that's just, that's just how you stand but I'm not gonna wipe you out anymore. So how can we move forward? We gotta check our fruit because what's in our heart produces our words that we say, which produces our fruit. Look at Matthew 12, 33 through 34. A tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. You brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. So if God says our heart is evil, we got to check our heart. Because if we check our heart, then we can mind our words. Because when we mind our words, we can create good. Because when we speak, we create. When we speak, we create. So when we check our heart, we can mind our words. I want us to take a look at King Hezekiah. Now, y'all, King Hezekiah, we don't talk about much. But he was a game changer in the kingdom of Judah. His dad was awful, y'all. His dad killed off siblings, killed off people. He worshiped idols in the temple. I mean, just a terrible man, a terrible king. So King Hezekiah came into the picture, and he said, you know what? I'm going to take down all of these idol worship, all these idol worshipers. I'm going to lead the Israelites to the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty. I want to restore Judah. That's what he did. But I submit to you this morning that Hezekiah used the power of his words to change and create a change in the kingdom of Judah, both good and bad. Remember, what we speak is what we create. Let's look at Hezekiah in 2 Chronicles verse 31. This is what Hezekiah did throughout Judah, doing what was good and right, Faithful before the Lord and everything that he undertook in the service of God's temple and in obedience to the law of the commandments. He sought his God and worked wholeheartedly. And so he prospered. Family, would you say his heart is in the right place in the scripture? Would you agree with me? Here we see that Hezekiah had his heart right standing with God. This gave him confidence to speak life over the people of Judah. Let's read the situation in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 9. King Hezekiah is talking to all the people of Judah. He's using his words. He said, if you return to the Lord, then your fellow Israelites and your children will be shown compassion by their captors, and they will return to this land, and the Lord your God will be gracious. He is gracious and compassionate. He will not turn his face from you. You know, if we're going to speak life with the power of our words, we got to know God's promises. And to know God's promises, we got to know God's word. So number one, if we're going to speak life We got to speak God's promises. When we know God's promises, we can speak against defeat. It doesn't matter the destruction that has been spoken over over our lives because we can line ourselves up with the promises of God. Let's look at Hezekiah as a leader. When Hezekiah encouraged his people, the people of Israel, to worship the Lord, 
He was in the right place, and therefore he was confident in the promises of God. The promises of God were compassion, grace, commitment. God said, I will never turn my face from you. We have to speak life. So now the enemy comes into the picture. Let's look at 2 Chronicles 32 and 7. The enemy comes into the picture, but here King Hezekiah is encouraging his folks. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because the king of Assyria and the vast army is with them. Don't worry about that. For there is greater power with us than with him. With him, there is only arm and flesh, but with us, the Lord, our God, to help us fight our battles. And the people gain confidence. But check this out. Why did they gain confidence? Because of the words Hezekiah spoke. Your words will create Your words will create. What you speak creates. And Hezekiah created confidence to the people of Judah. Now, the Assyrians are already destroying the land of Judah. They are already in the land killing people and knocking out the buildings and the place of that land. The the people of Judah are literally looking at defeat. Literally looking at defeat, destruction in front of their eyes. But they are encouraged because of the word that was spoken over their life. Family, what do you do? How do you respond when you're looking at defeat? When you're looking at destruction over your life? How do you respond when your back is against the wall, when your faith is being tested. How do you respond? What do you say? Do you cuss? Listen, the enemy is going to play mind games with us. The enemy stands to manipulate us. The enemy stands to deceive us. The enemy stands to make us fall. Even when we're looking at defeat, he wants us to fail. Look at the enemy in this, in this scripture. In Isaiah chapter 36, I'm going to read verses 4 through 15, but I'm going to skip around. Now, this is the enemy, the field commander of Assyria. He says to the people of Judah, now you tell Hezekiah. This is what the great king of Assyria says. On what are you basing this confidence of yours? You say you have counsel and might of war, but you speak only empty words. Manipulation, y'all see it? On whom are you depending that you would rebel against me? But if you say to me, we are depending on the Lord our God, isn't he the one? whose high places and altars Hezekiah removed. Y'all see that? Saying to Judah and Jerusalem, you must worship before this altar. Y'all, the enemy is literally saying, don't believe Hezekiah. He's manipulating the people of Judah to think that they are confused. He's leading them to think that They didn't have it right to follow and trust Hezekiah. He's leading them even worse to not trust God. The enemy wants to deceive and manipulate us. Skip down to verse 14. It says, this is what the king of Assyria says. Do not let Hezekiah deceive you. He cannot deliver you. Do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust the Lord, he says. The Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given over to the hand of the king of Assyria. A lie. A lie. Now, in this scripture, the enemy is the commander of the Assyrian army. But what does the enemy look like in your life this morning? The commander of the Assyrian army said, 
you're not big enough. You're not strong enough. You don't have enough ammunition. Even if I give you what I got, you can't win this battle. Does that sound familiar? You're not pretty enough. You're not cute enough. You're not handsome enough. You don't speak well. You can't read well. You don't have what it takes. Has anyone ever spoken this over you? Something similar that you can connect with that calls deep pain. Some of us might be living out of that space. Family, I urge you this morning, connect with your heart in this moment. Forgive the individual who spoke death over you. You are more than a conqueror. You are greater than what has been spoken over your life. We have to know God's promises to speak God's promises. The Bible says, whatsoever we bind here on earth, then it shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose here on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So we got to start speaking the confidence of God, the promises of God. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. I am the head and not the tail. I will win because God is my victor. The Lord is my banner. I am healed because of the blood of Jesus in my life. My family is blessed. I am blessed. My husband is blessed. My children are blessed. My job is blessed. God has given us the power of words when he created you. You are given the ability to to create when you speak. It doesn't matter if you're looking at defeat right now. Speak over the defeat. You have the power of your words to speak over the defeat. Rebuke everything that the enemy has called over your life. He has no power. You have dominion. You have rule. You have authority. By power vested in the Holy Spirit, declare it today. No words are empty. No words are empty. The Bible says we either speak life or death. Nothing in between. It's our tongue that articulates the life or death. It's, it's the small muscle in our mouth that articulates the life or the death that we speak out of our mouth, our tongue. In order to speak life, we got to discipline our tongue. Number two, discipline the tongue. Let's look at the book of James together, y'all. James took a whole chapter chapter three, to talk about the power of our tongue. This is something we can't go to sleep on. Let's look at James three, verse two. It says, indeed, we all make mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect. If we could control our tongues, we could also control ourselves in every other way. Now that word perfect, y'all, I don't want us to get caught up on perfect. Because perfect in the scripture does not mean flawless. Perfect in this scripture means complete in your faith. You're mature, okay? So that's what perfect means. Don't get caught up on that. In this scripture, James submits to us that this small muscle controls our entire body from head to toe, this small muscle. And he really wants to make it plain and crystal clear, y'all, because then he goes on to compare our tongue to the bit that we put in a horse's mouth. It's a very, very small bit that's made up of mixed materials. It goes in a horse's mouth. And when you put it in the horse's mouth, depending on the way that you tug on the bit, that horse's entire body will move right or left forward, backward, or stop because of that small bit. And then James, let me, James says, let me take it even further. You know the rudder on a boat? Even when the waves are moving harshly in the wind, this rudder is a small piece of a large vessel 
And depending on how it moves, the boat will turn. Based on this small piece, I submit to you this morning that James is saying, just like a rudder can move a large vessel, our tongue controls our body. So if you can't control your tongue, you can't control your body. If you can't control your tongue, you can't control your body. Some of you are wondering why, why you're overweight, why you're addicted to sugar, why you're addicted to poor behaviors, unhealthy lifestyles. You might need to discipline your tongue. Because when you discipline your tongue, you can discipline and control your body. If you can't control your tongue, then you can't control your body. And whatever we speak, we create. You want to speak out of control or in control? Discipline your tongue. What's coming out of your mouth? I got to take it back to my brother, King Hezekiah. I think that we, he is a great example of what our tongue can do with life and with death. Now, if we look back at Hezekiah, he was diagnosed with a deadly disease. The prophet Isaiah came to Hezekiah himself and said, man, you're about to die. You're about to die. You need to get your stuff in order because you finna go out of here. Hezekiah turned to the Lord immediately and he began to pray. His heart was lined up with what the Lord, word of God said. His heart was lined up with the promises of God. And when he prayed to God, God said, I'll give you 15 years. He said, I'll give you 15 years, Hezekiah. Hezekiah took those 15 years. But then, y'all, went a little sour. Let's look at 2 King chapter 20, verses 12 through 19. Y'all bear with me. I'm going to read the entire thing because we got to get it. 12 through, 13, 12 through 19, excuse me. It says, shortly after this, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, having heard that the king was sick, he sent a get well card and a gift to Hezekiah. Wasn't that sweet? Hezekiah was pleased and he showed the messengers around the place silver, gold, spices, aromatic uh, oils, his stockpile of weapons, a guided tour of his prized possessions. <laughs> there wasn't a thing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah didn't show them. And then Isaiah the prophet showed up. Huh. And just what were these men doing here, Hezekiah? Where did they come from and why? Hezekiah said, I don't know, I mean, they came from far away. Babylon, I think. <laughs> and so then Isaiah says, well, what did they see in the palace, Hezekiah? Hezekiah said, everything. There isn't anything I did not show them. Hezekiah said, I gave them the grand tour. Nothing untouched. So then Isaiah spoke to Hezekiah, listen to what God has to say about this. The day is coming when everything you own and everything your ancestors has passed down to you right down to the last cup and saucer will be cleaned out of here, plundered and packed off to Babylon. God's word was worse yet your sons, Hezekiah, the progeny of your sons you've begotten. You're going to end up, they're going to end up as eunuchs in a palace under the king of Babylon. Watch this, y'all. When we speak, we create. Look at Hezek look how Hezekiah responded to the prophet Isaiah. In one sentence, he says, well, God says it. Guess it must be good. But in his heart, he was thinking to himself in his heart, it won't happen in my lifetime. I'm going to enjoy the peace and the security while I live. 
So what about my sons? So what about this kingdom? So what about this palace? I'll be safe and secure, living in the luxury of my wealth. We see here, family, a very important shift. Hezekiah's heart changed. It changed from lining up with the servitude and gratitude to a heart of pride. Stone, wealth, things. It shifted. His posture changed. And when his posture changed, his body language changed. And when his body language changed, he literally opened up the door of his palace. Come on in, enemy. What, what can I show you? Look at my silver. Look at my gold. Smell the oil. Look at all that I have. He let the enemy in. And it was prophesied that it would all be taken away. Hezekiah's words gave a direct reflection of his heart. He sarcastically said, if God says it, it must be good. All that he had acquired, all that his ancestors, and by the way, one of his ancestors was King David. So that just gives you an idea of all the wealth that he had. All of the wealth that he acquired, he gave away in one sentence. The power of words. One sentence. No remorse, no shame, no guilt. One sentence. And beyond that, even worse, he cut off his legacy. He cut off his legacy. The scripture says that his sons will become eunuchs. That means barren. They won't produce anymore. So you went from being the king of a kingdom to giving your whole legacy over to another kingdom because of your words. There was a heart shift from servitude and gratitude to pride. And you let it come out of your mouth, Hezekiah. What's our posture today, family? What's our posture today? Is our heart in a place where we are allowing the enemy to come through our palace, our temples, where Holy Spirit is supposed to dwell? What words are we saying? Are we inviting the enemy to sweep us clean? What's our posture? So if the tongue is so important, if disciplining the tongue is so important, then how do we discipline our tongue? Well, we got to evict filthy language, y'all. We, we just got to, when I, when I picture eviction, it, it, everything that doesn't belong inside has to come out. Eviction. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. It says, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. We got to evict that. We got to get rid of it. It's got to come out. It doesn't belong here. Next, to discipline our tongue, we got to grace our speech. Ephesians chapter 4 and 29, it says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful in building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Can I, can I open the door for you? Oh, you have a great day. My pleasure. Grace your speech. Garnish your tongue. And lastly, we got to guard our heart. Luke 6 and 45, we read it earlier this morning. Jesus himself says, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say, what you say flows from what's in your heart got to guard our hearts. The music that we listen to, the television shows that we watch, the conversations that we have, we have got to guard our hearts. That's what discipline looks like. 
and it's not easy. We flippantly say stuff, even when stuff is funny, y'all, we might be like, I'm killing myself. Oh, my God. And if you're real cool, you might be one of those guys like, that was funny. No, I'm dead, dog. I'm dead. Is it that funny that you are literally speaking death over your life? We just flippantly do stuff. If we discipline our tongue, then we'll discipline our body. If we get our heart right, then we can discipline our tongue. We can control our body. Our hearts are a reflection of what comes out of our mouth. When the Lord changes our heart, that's when our tongue is disciplined and can be disciplined. Our tongues submit to our hearts. Change your heart and discipline your tongue. I want the tech team to share an image. We'll give them a moment. Here we go. Okay, y'all. So this is a picture of my Be Free book. This is several years ago, and um, I was reading this book to prepare for today. I'm going to read the question. It says, ask yourself, what does my day-to-day conversation say about my spiritual condition? Do my words reflect that God lives inside of me? Ask yourself that question. You see my answers. That first answer in blue, that's what I said several years ago when I taught the Be Free class. That second answer in black is what I said last week. I'm still struggling. Why am I sharing this with you? First, because I was convicted. I knew I couldn't share this word with you unless I had got my heart right. This was a space that I had to bring to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I heard a wise person say that gossip is a conversation in which you or the person involved has absolutely nothing to do with. You're neither part of the problem or the solution. Gossip is something that you are neither the problem or the solution. In other words, ain't none your business. Let me make it practical. Sharing life with one another is not sin. It's when we begin to raise suspicion, when we begin to raise question, when we begin to incite things, that's when things shift. Example, Pastor Aaron went and washed his car yesterday. Girl, you know Pastor Aaron went and washed his car yesterday. Something went down last night. (laughs) Did you hear the difference? Let's read it in scripture. If we look at James 6, 3, James chapter 3, verse 6, it says, And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire. For it is set on fire by hell itself. But no one can tame the tongue. It's restless. It's evil. Full of deadly poison. Our words have got us in so much mess. The Bible says that it's flaming set on fire by hell and I'm not cussing that's what the word says we got to get our hearts right family and that's the second reason why I'm sharing this with you because after reading my own be free book I realized this was an area that I was not completely free and it brought me to a place of confession and from there it brought me to a place of repentance. That's what I desire for you today. I desire that you just take a moment to reflect on your heart. Your sin might not be gossip. Your sin might be cussing, cursing. Your sin might be not speaking well over yourself. Whatever your sin is, I want you to search your heart. 
this morning. Because what's in your heart is going to reflect what comes out of your mouth. So just take a moment this morning in reflection. Because as we move through this life, we're going to have to depend on the Lord to purify us, to clean us up, to confess and bring our hearts to a place of repentance. So I'm going to allow the, the music ministry just to, to bless us for, for just a moment. And while they're coming, I'm going to go ahead and pray. If you'll just bow your heads. And you can say this prayer quietly to yourself. Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Take my heart and purify me. I desire more of you to speak life over myself, my family, and everyone connected to me. Deliver me, God, from my temptations. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Family, let's listen. stand we're going to speak this declaration over our lives and then pastor Aaron is going to come and he's going to dismiss us this morning so I'm going to it's kind of a call and response I'm going to say something and then I desire for you all to say it out loud because we are declaring to speak life over ourselves this morning amen I am a child of God I am redeemed. I am forgiven. I am saved by grace through faith. I am blessed. I am favored. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My testimony overcomes the enemy. My tongue has the power of life and death. So I speak life over me, my family, and my home. I speak life over God's people. I speak according to the freedom God has given me. I bind gossip. I bind lies and the words of death and fear over my life. I lose power, I lose love, I lose soundness of mind, I speak life in the name of Jesus, hallelujah and amen. So I may worship thee, create in me a clean 
give God praise in this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, don't leave this place and not take this message with you. There are some things that God has been wanting to shift in your lives, but you've been too afraid to open your mouth. You open up your mouth. Don't let your mouth be used in a way that the enemy intends. Instead, use your mouth to speak and declare the promises over your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, just say that over your In the name of Jesus, my mouth will be used to glorify God. Hmm. Listen, that declaration is available. Our, te our team is uh, going to put it up on the screen. There is a QR code. Feel free to take out your phones and take this declaration with you. Because, see, this is what's going to happen. Tomorrow's Monday. See, we feel real good on Sunday, but tomorrow's Monday. And so when Monday comes, y'all know that song, When Sunday Comes? When Monday comes, and then Tuesday comes, I want you to be able to take this declaration we want you to be able to speak these things over your life because the enemy is good at trying to make you forget what God told you. Speak these things over your life. Speak these things over your finances. Speak these things over your family. Speak this thing. Speak these things. Speak, 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 speak. Because the power of life and death is in your tongue. So as we're standing in this place, and I said our prayer team would come at this time. She said early in the service, if you have a need, feel free to come and have somebody to stand in agreement with you for that thing that you are praying for. And at this time as well, we're going to come down and um, Pastor Brittany, myself, will be down front. Feel free to come down. We'd love to speak with you. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you, family. Did you enjoy that word today? Yeah. Amen. Oh, she pretty, y'all. She pretty. I'm going to speak that. Girl, you fine. I speak that. In the name. Yes, Lord. Family, we love you. God bless you. Let's, let me speak this blessing over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we love you, we glorify you, and we thank you that we are made in your image and you made us beautiful. And we are smart and we are intelligent and we are strong and we are mighty and we are powerful and we will speak life our tongues will be used to speak life. Those things that are not, we will speak them as though they were. In the name of Jesus, we are blessed. In the city and in the field, we are blessed. We are the head and not the tail, we are blessed. We are above and not beneath, we are blessed. And we speak blessings over our lives, over our families. I speak this blessing over your people, God. In the name of Jesus, everything they put their hands to will be blessed. Every, th every place that they walk will be blessed. They are shifting the atmosphere because they're blessed. They're shifting conversations because they're blessed. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you.